how do you follow that? Man. How many of you are thankful for the blood? Man, oh man. I heard when Pam was choosing that song, I heard parts of it. I should have listened to it before I got up here. How many of you are ready for the word? You know, we've been talking about God does impossible math. Say it with me. God does impossible math. And we went into miracles. We're doing this miracles, anointings, um, therefores. I'm doing this from memory. And happenings. So we talked about miracles. And week before last, we um, started talking about anointings. And I just want to go back and do a little bit of update. I didn't ask him to do this, to go back with me. But... I told you, you need to believe for anointings. Will you say amen to that? Now, let me tell you, um, you know, I have had a weird week. It started with last Sunday, doing a wedding on Sunday, which is, um, you know, it was our son's wedding, and it was a wonderful wedding, and, and, um, but we ended up cleaning up. I think we got home, what was it, babe, about 10.30 or something like that by the time we got everything done. And, of course, we had to unload stuff when we got home, so we ended up getting to bed about 12.30, and the adrenaline was still running. I mean, of you know, it was it was still running, so it was hard to sleep. And you know, we got up Monday, and uh, it started my week. Just to show you how it went, my week started off with I took all the trash from the from the wedding to the the transfer station. And they told me when I got to the transfer station that if I had food and plastics mixed together, that I had to separate them. And um, and we had I don't know twelve bags, big bags of trash and. You know, and I, I looked at him. Did you know I, I wasn't too spiritual? Can I tell you this? I'm, I'm making a confession here just to show you how this goes. And uh, I looked at the guy and I said, look, we have two choices here. I said, you can take the trash now or I'll take it back home and put it in my trash can and set it out by the road on Friday. Either way, you're going to take it. So take it now. He said, put it over there. So how many of you know I did? And uh, if I'd have known we had to separate it out, I would have. Well, then we, um, you know, when we talk about anointings, guys, and one of the things that God's, God's going to, gonna, he's been doing it, but I believe there's going to be an increase of anointings. And we went into 1 John 2, 20 and 21, and I want you to see this. You don't have to turn there, so don't worry about these, okay? But I'm just going to do it. You have an anointing from the Holy One. Everybody say, I'm anointed. anointed. Come on, guys. If you, don't, if you don't confess you're anointed, how are you going to believe for the anointing? If you're not willing to confess what God says you are, what the Word says you are, how can you believe to be what the Word says you can be if you're not willing to talk about it in front of people? So you are anointed. Everybody say, I have received an anointing. You have an anointing from the Holy One. You know, and we went into three different translations, but you have been anointed. You hold a sacred appointment, and you have been given uh, an unction from. Everybody say, I have an unction. All right, and then, then we went into it in the message paraphrase where it says, but you belong, the Holy One anointed you. Everybody say it with me, I belong, <laughs> and I'm anointed. I mean, we're doing this because i I got to get you thinking the right way. All right, because a lot of times we go to church, guys, and we have a real good church service, and then we leave, and we're not effective once we get out of the church. And the church is not just a building to house the anointing. Okay, the church is where we come and we get equipped to go out and release the anointing into public and, and uh, you know, to do what God has for us to do. Well, then we went into John chapter 14, and this is where Jesus said, I, I, hey, I'm, I'm going to ask the Father and I'm going to give you another comforter. And that word comforter means counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener. Everybody say strengthener. Don't you dare confess that you're not enough for what's going on in your life. You have one inside of you who makes you equal and more than enough. You are well able to do what God's called you to do. The handle, what, you know, and, and I hear people do this all the time, and I've actually been guilty of it myself. I'll make the statement because I get in my head, and I'll say, God, just, I don't, if one more thing happens, how many of you have ever said this? If one more thing happens, then what happens? Y'all, one more thing, maybe two, sometimes three. You know, because you just give the enemy the ammunition to go ahead and defeat you. You told him exactly what to do. At least let him guess. 
pray it out in the spirit and let him sit there and go, what in the heck are she or she talking about? You know, at least at least get over in the spirit. But we're we're guilty of this because we operate from from our minds so much and from our own thinking so much to where when we get into situations where it's not something that we can do naturally, it's hard to make that shift if we don't train ourselves to make that shift. It just does not come natural to be spiritual. That's why you can't take a spiritual pill and be spiritual. Because they don't make a, God don't make a vitamin for it. Did you take your spiritual pill today? No. We can tell. Come on, y'all laugh with me a little bit. It happens. And, uh, but God didn't make it that way. You have to apply yourself to the principles of God. This, and if you never believe to be anointed, how will you ever be anointed? How will you ever flow in the anointing? How will you be able to make a difference in people's lives? So he told us, he said, you, you know, I'm going to send another comforter. Everybody say another comforter. In other words, he's not going to leave you alone. And i got to go back and do this one. The last thing we ended up week before last, Sunday before last, was I told you I was a gift. Amen. And we went into this. God gave gifts. This is in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8 through 14. God gave gifts to men. Part of those gifts is apostle, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. All right, so, you know, whether you, whether you accept me this way or not, I am a gift. All right, and I do, there's an anointing, and this is why I pointed this out. There's an anointing for a pastor to do what a pastor does. There's an anointing for an apostle to do what an apostle does. There's an anointing for the fivefold ministry because they, they fit in that. Now, I, I got tired of, you know, I was struggling with, with pastoring there at one time, and I made the decision I wanted to become an evangelist because they can get five sermons and preach them all year. I can't do that. But they have an anointing. Everybody say anointing to do something different than what I do. So my pastor at that time said, well, if you feel like you're supposed to be an evangelist, plan some meetings and go. You know, go see what happens. And he said, I guarantee you at the end of a couple of weeks, you'll know whether you're an evangelist or not. Well, I went, and I forget how many nights it was, did five services or something like that. And I'm destroying myself trying to get ready for the next message because I'm a pastor. God, would, the Holy Spirit, the anointing in me, won't let me just get up and preach one message five Sundays in a row. See, I have to prepare fresh manna, and I'm not saying evangelists don't, but they go from congregation to congregation, from meeting to meeting where somebody possibly has not heard what they had to say. So, and I heard one evangelist, he said, I get five sermons ready a year. And he said, now I preach those five sermons at every meeting that I go to because I go somewhere different the whole year. Well, it's a different anointing in me, man. I come back from a week of that stuff, and my pastor looked at me and said, well, how do you feel? I said, I'm a pastor. Boy, you remember that Pam? I'm, I, it confirmed that me. I I was whipped whenever I got back because the anointing in me is different. Come on, guys, say it with me. We're different. Every one of us is anointed different because we go into different situations. We have different circumstances. And here's the weird thing. You know, it's just not one particular anointing that God gives. It's many anointings that God can give. So we need to believe for the anointing. Say it with me, guys. You, you need to be believing for supernatural, special anointings in your life to where you can, you can withstand the attack if that's what's going on, to where you can, you can see what's behind the assault if that's what's going on. You can see what's happening in your life. You know, you got, you got a different view of it because God sees things totally different than we do. And he says, you may not be able to tap into that in the natural, but I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit. And there's anointings where you can see the difference going on. And I, I think I shared this. I was praying for a guy one time, and he was just, he was bound, man. The pastor told me he'd been bound up for years, you know, with drugs and different things like that. And the guy come up for prayer, and when I went to pray for him, guys, I just, and we're going to talk about this. This is why I'm going to share some of these stories um, or some of these situations that I've been in. Um, when I went to pray for him, I closed my eyes, and when I closed my eyes to lay hands on him, I saw like, um, it, they weren't, they were like vines, tentacles. Not, not like an octopus, but they were like old, big, demonic vines. 
That's the only, and they were wrapped around him and had him bound, had his arms out so he couldn't worship, had his, they were wrapped around his chest so he couldn't get air, had him bound so he couldn't move. And I saw all these vines, and I, and I never will forget, God told me, he said, I want you to cut the vines off, I want you to cut the, the bondage off of him. And I went, well, God, I don't have a sword, you know, and um, how you want me to do it? He said, use your hand because you're anointed. Come on, y'all, say it with me, you're anointed. See, God places an anointing inside you to handle the situations that you come up on. You're not in that place by chance. God knew I was going to be there and knew I would hear and knew I would obey, even though it was a struggle for me because you got to get out of your head and be spirit-led. All right, and I remember I, I walked up to the guy and, and I said, all right, I mean, it, when you don't know what to do, Ask the Father, and he'll get you through, and we'll rhyme it out, okay? And, uh, you know, and, and I, I went, all right, well, he said, just take your hand. He said, you're anointed, take your hand, and begin to cut those things off of him. Just cut those things. And I've done this several times. One of them was with chains, and one of them was with vines, and I began to cut. I, and, I, I mean, I just, every, the ushers backed up because I looked like a professional karate expert. No, I did not. You know, because, I mean, I was just, ah, come, ah, off, and Jesus, hey, off, and I, I cut, man, and I cut. And, you know, as I cut in the spirit, I saw all these things fall off of him. And you know that you've done and you've been obedient because you have an anointing. The Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you're a child of God, but he also bears witness with your spirit that you're doing the right thing and that you've accomplished it. Because when I finished, I went to pray for the guy then after I finished doing that, and this is what he did. He went, ah. <sighs> And it had left him. It had left him, and he got set free. Now listen, guys, that's the anointing you can have. Now that wouldn't have happened in some, some places. Do you follow me? Because you, you got to be able to hear, you got to be able to see, and then you got to be able to flow. And this is what we're talking about with the anointing today. How do we flow? And um, let's go into 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to read verse 1 and then 4 through 11, and then I'm, I'm going to do a crash course. Everybody say crash course. On the gifts of the Spirit, I, I, this is what I got planned to do. We'll see. Okay, on the gifts of the Spirit, because I want to go through and I want, I want you to see them. We had one in operation earlier in the church, and it was the gift of tongues. All right, and we'll get to these last. And, uh, you know, so I, won't, I don't know whether I'll get to them today. We may get to them next week. But then you have the gift of tongues, and you have the gift of interpretation. Now, somebody else was supposed to give that interpretation, but God's not going to leave it hanging. Okay, God's going to fulfill what's been done because when, when a tongue comes out like that, when tongues come forth in a, in a service, there did, it happens for the edification of the body. Now, let me, let me separate something out right here. There's a lot of people that get confused on this because they don't, they don't study the difference between being filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues versus the nine gifts of the Spirit where, where it's an edification for the body of Christ. Now, see, Paul even said, I, I can pray in the understanding, and I can pray in the Spirit. Maybe it won't be so on the surface. Anyway, I can pray in my understanding, which is where I pray in my natural language, but I, I can also pray in the Spirit, where I pray in another language, and, you know, and there's a distinction between those two. So people get confused on that. I had somebody ask me one time, well, you know, I've been taught all my life that, that um, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit's been done away with. And I told him, I said, well, prove it to me in Scripture. Where does it say that the Holy Spirit's been done away with? Because we see the Holy Spirit working all the way up the whole time the church is here. Come on, y'all, don't shout me down. But see, it makes preachers a little more comfortable when they don't have all the kookiness going on. That's the truth. I've had preachers tell me that. Well, I'd rather not have any gifts flowing than have to deal with them. Well, then you're going to have a dead church. Wow. I love you pastors out there. I really do. But you need to get full of the Holy Ghost. You need to get full of the Spirit of God. Let's go. Come on. I'm tired of playing games, guys. I just really am. Chapter 1. I mean, verse 1 of chapter 12, 1 Corinthians. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, everybody say spiritual gifts. Brother, and I don't want you to be ignorant. See, God don't want you to be ignorant. This is why he tried to explain them to you. 
But see, explanation can only go so far. Flowing is on the job training. Don't you think so? Flowing is on the job training. That, that's on that's a you know, that's on the job training. That's where you get to figure things out. You know, when you begin to go up and do what God says for you to do and, and obey how God says for you to obey, and then you see the evidence of what takes place, and then the Holy Spirit will come to after that will say to you, or we'll just do it this way, God will say to you, Well, you could you should have did this and you should have did that, and that's where you learn now the next time you get to that, you'll know how to handle that situation. See, first time I ever cast a demon out of it, anybody, guys, I mean, I, I had never done it before. It was, it was totally strange to me. And I'll be honest, if you don't think, my, my kids always tried to get me to watch um, some of these horror movies, and I would tell them, I don't need to watch those. <laughs> and they say, Dad, it's just entertainment. I said, I understand that. But if you ever cast the devil out of somebody, no movie won't even come close to that. Do you understand? Because the first time I run into it, I'm telling you, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. And I was anointed to make a difference and ended up casting the devil out of this person in, a, in another country and saw the devil manifest in a way that I'd never seen him manifest. But can I tell you something, guys? Once it was done the first time, I've never been afraid of another one. And I've had them tell me before, I ain't coming out. And I tell them, you ain't got no choice. I'll talk your language. You got to go. Come on, guys. We have an anointing. This is totally different than what I had planned. So anyway, let's just flow with it. Amen. You have an anointing, but if you never, if you never get out and try anything, if you never get out and experience, if you never get out and try to operate in that anointing, then you're never going to know how to flow. And flow is what keeps you going. Flow is how you grow. My goodness. Listen to this in verse 4. But there are diversities of gifts. Everybody say that with me, diversities of gifts. That means there's different giftings. There are. There are. And, and we'll see this in, in operation. You know, but what's the best gift at the best time? Whatever gift is needed. That's why they flow from the Holy Spirit. You know, and I've had people tell me this because we'll get into this. Oh, I have a gift of discernment. What do you mean you got a gift of discernment? Well, I can discern this. Well, gift, you know, the gifts of the Spirit where discernment is concerned is nothing about just discernment, seeing in the spirit realm. You're able to see. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you in the truth and tell you things that can be going on in a person's life, you know, but you're, you're the one who has to step out and do that. I mean, if you're, if you're around somebody and the Holy Spirit shows you something about somebody, the first thing you need to do is you need to know whether you're, it's open for you to share or not. That's the first thing because sometimes God has shown me things about people and I need to pray it through for them so that they can get the victory. But there's sometimes where God will show me things about people and the anointing will come, come on me in such a way where I, have, I just go up to them. I say I have no choice. I do. But boldness will make you go up to that person and say, hey, this is what God's saying. Hey, this is what needs to happen. And, you know, and then that person is faced with the choice at that point in time. Am I going to hear what the Spirit of God's saying through somebody, or am I going to neglect it? And now the choice is totally theirs. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is pray about that. But let's, let's do this. There, there, are manifest, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Come on, you all come from the Holy Spirit. They don't come from holy water. I'm going to do this. They don't come from chasing down crosses crying or crucifixions that are flowing all. Boy, it got quiet in here then. They come from the same spirit. There are differences of ministry, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities. But it's the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit, say that with me, y'all. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. This is the thing, guys. You've got to understand the gifts of the Spirit were meant to profit others. They weren't meant for they to be your secret gift. All right? You were meant to flow. You were meant to accomplish. God created. Boy, is this different right now? God created you to accomplish something, and the gifts of the Spirit are how you're going to do that. Well, if you go out to somebody and you don't know why they're bound and you're trying to pray for them, you've got to pray 
all over the place to try to hit something. But if you're spirit-led, say it with me, guys, spirit-led, then you can pinpoint the target and what takes somebody else an hour to get somebody free, you can do it in two seconds. I'm just sensing it out here. Bear with me. I want to read that again. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. It's supposed to be used around people. Do you understand? It's supposed to profit people. It's supposed to help people out. It's supposed, you know, it's supposed to make them free. Now, let me break it down this way, too. How many of you know when you study the Word, you gain understanding of the Word? But you can't just study the Word and not be a doer of the Word. What you do is you read the Word, and you put the Word into practice, and by practicing the Word, doing the Word, y'all with me? What ends up happening is you gain an understanding of that Word that other people may not have. I'm teaching more this morning than I'm preaching, so bear with me, guys. I, I understand I'm you know, teaching it that way sometimes. And, uh, but this, this is what happens, you know, but you'll gain an understanding. So I just had this happen just in the last week where somebody had an issue, issue and a situation with their, with their family, not in the church. It was a friend of ours. And, and, um, and she was talking to me about it. And there's a verse of Scripture that we've been studying on Wednesday night that has really enlightened me and has enlightened us as a church and, you know, about how evil people can't sleep unless they cause someone to fall and their sleep is taken away unless they cause someone to stumble. And then it goes on to say, and they don't even know what they stumble over. Just paraphrase this a little bit. But I, I, and I was, I was talking to her about it, and uh, she ended up, getting free from something that she'd been struggling with for years, I think it was, for years. And told me, said, I, I just can't believe how much freedom I got right now. So see, there's a lot of times just your understanding of the Word, God can anoint your understanding to help people break free because they don't, they don't read the Word in an anointed way. They just read it to read it because they feel like they're accomplishing it a part of their works every day. Oh. But see, we study the Word to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the Word. <laughs> Gosh, this is going crazy right now. So you can know the Word and get people free, guys, just because it becomes revelation to you. Do you understand? You can set people free because you've seen it work. You know the power of the Word of God. But see, here's the problem. A lot of the church, and I'm not talking about us because we're not here but a lot of the body of Christ today has never experienced what the Word of God says they can have. Amen. We have to have that experience. You know what? You need to come out of church on cloud nine. Undepressed. And set free. Do you understand? You have to come out that way. Because what hope does the world have if the enemy can keep you bound just like he's got the world bound? Well, it is going to go deeper than what I thought. Verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one to profit all. Listen to verse 8. We're going to read through them, and then I'll go in and comment on them. For the one is given the word of wisdom. Everybody say, the word of wisdom. But listen to what it says, through the Spirit. This is not natural wisdom. Please understand, this is not natural wisdom. Well, you know, I, I, just got, I got wisdom other people don't have. Yeah, you got it, but that ain't the kind we're talking about here. All right, there are a lot of people to gain, you know, Pam... Pam told me, she said, you know, just because people ask you for your opinion don't mean they want it. And I always come back and say, well, then they shouldn't have asked. Because I do have an opinion about things. And if you want to know it, ask. If you don't want to know it, walk away. Okay? This is not, <laughs> this is not talking about... This <laughs> I just thought of something. I can't do it. Though. Anyway, this is not talking about just natural wisdom. This is talking about a different kind of wisdom. This is wisdom in the mind of God. This is things he knows. Do you understand that you don't, you don't, you're not aware of? Okay, it says the one is given the word of knowledge. Everybody say it with me, the word of knowledge. But listen to what it says, through the same spirit, to another faith. Everybody say faith. This is not natural faith. We're going to look at this, guys. This is not faith you receive by reading the word. All right, this is, you know, become, getting an understanding of what the word says. This is a supernatural type of faith. And this actually works with other gifts. All these gifts work in, in, you know, in conjunction with other gifts that are flowing at that point in time. 
And then it says, to another, gifts. Everybody say, gifts of healings. Come on, y'all, look at that. Gifts of healings. It didn't say, the gift of healing. It's gifts of healings. To another, the working of miracles. Come on, y'all, say it with me. The working of miracles. All right, to another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. Now, we're going to go and look at these, but listen to verse 11. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Everybody say amen to that. Amen. Now, guys, it's amazing to me that this is a part of Scripture, just like every other part of Scripture is a part of Scripture. This was ordained by God, but we have a lot of people that will not read this because they don't understand it. It's just like the book of Revelation. A lot of people stay away from the book of Revelation because it's, it, it's just too deep. Well, how are you going to know where we're going without it? And I'm telling you right now, I've read Revelation and figured out some things in it. And there are some things that I don't know yet, but I read the end of the book and I see how it all ends, and that's good for me. Because, y'all, even though the enemy thinks he can win, he can't. Do you understand? He's a defeated little punk. And Revelation says that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does. That's in my own language. But I do that. So I get up and I say, you know what? You're just a defeated punk. Get out of here. He don't like it. But I don't care. Well, Paul lists nine manifestations or gifts of the Spirit. And the nine manifestations are gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're going to generalize them just a little bit. And the first one we're going to talk about is revelation gifts. Everybody say revelation gifts. Revelation. And these rev I'm gonna, I'm, what I'm going to do, my intention is, guys, to get as far as I can today, and then we'll, we'll hit it again next week and do it, um, finish it up. But these revelation gifts are the word of wisdom. Say it with me again. The word of knowledge, all right, and discerning of spirits. And I want you to see this because I'm going to take you to a portion of Scripture, and I want you to follow with me because you're going to see this, and I hadn't decided whether I'm going to do this with everything but this one I am. Uh, the Word of Wisdom is a supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning the divine purpose and plan in the mind and will of God. So here it is. The, 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 um, the Word of Wisdom is where God releases some of His wisdom into you for something that needs to take place for something that needs to happen, the, uh, for a purpose. It's got a purpose. There's a plan for it. And, and I'll, I'll show you some of this as we get in. So, so when we talk about, you know, the word of wisdom, you need to understand God will give you a word. Um, I saw a, I was in a meeting one time, and I'm going to try to bring these up and, and lay them out where a prophet was there. Now, prophets are really scary from a pastor's point of view. And they're weird. He said weird. And, uh, and the reason why I say that is you don't know where they're going. You know, and, and sometimes they are terrible preachers and teachers. And you may have to sit through 45 minutes of the worst word ever <laughs> ministered if you're not careful. I'm just saying. And then the anointing hits. And then everything changes. Do you follow me? It all changes. And this guy, you know, he, he was so anointed he couldn't walk on his own power. And I knew that because... I was one of the people that had to get beside him and help carry him. I couldn't hardly walk on the power that he was on. It was everything I could do to support him. And finally, two ushers grabbed him. We were able to wobble with him. I mean, it was just that heavy of an anointing in the church. you know. And, and he, but he was particularly anointed for a reason. And he went up to a guy, and I knew this guy. Now, this is the thing, guys. Sometimes these prophets come in, they don't know nothing. You know, and a lot of them will lock in a room, and you think they're being, you know, uppity, you know, or whatever, but they just don't want to get around and hang around and hear things because it can, it can sway them to flow a different way. This is, this is one of the reasons why the day before I, I preach, I don't read any books because I don't want the book to influence my preaching because we have a natural tendency, whatever we study is the way we flow. Okay, so I'm expecting the gifts to flow through you. Do you follow me? I'm expecting the gifts of the Spirit to flow through you and not just be a one-service ordeal, but you be anointed to where you can flow as you go. Come on, y'all, say it with me. Flow 
as you go. That means you're going to affect everybody. You walk into the next restaurant, watch out. The Holy Spirit's got people in there he wants to minister to. And he can teach you how to do it coothful without being obnoxious. Okay? But you need to be led by the Spirit. So this prophet, you know, he went up to this guy. And I knew this pastor. He was changing from one church to another church. And it's, the other church had a better pay, you know, better salary, you know, because I was pastor at the, at the church where the prophet was. And I knew what was going on because I had talked with this guy. You know, and I hadn't talked to the prophet. I'm just a carrier. I'm just a support beam at that point in time. And, I mean, the anointing was so strong. And he went up to this guy, and he looked at him, and he said, Sir, he said, the Spirit of God told me you're, you're a pastor and you're leaving one church and going to another church. Now, now, if you're a pastor and you're going from one church to another church, that's going to get your attention. You follow me? But then he said this. God said, if you go, you'll destroy the church. So don't go. How many of you know you're hearing the mind of God on the subject? Now, just because God know something doesn't mean that people are going to do what God knows. All God and the gifts do is offer the opportunity for you to walk the right way. Come on, y'all. Amen. God went out, took the church, and destroyed it. Ended up having to leave. All right, so God knows things. How many of you know God knows more than you know? Have you figured that out by now? Do we know... <laughs> Do we know that by, by now? At least, yeah, you know, God knows things that you don't know, and he knows situations about people's lives that you don't know. And there is such a thing, let me do this one too, there is such a thing as you being uh, familiar with somebody and knowing things about somebody and being able to talk to them about their situation. And God can anoint your word to do something. That doesn't mean it's the gifts. Okay, so what I'm talking about is supernatural stuff, and I, I want you to be aware of that. So let, let me do this again. The, the word of wisdom, listen to this, is a supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning the divine purpose or plan in the mind and will of God. All right, now let's look at the word of knowledge. Everybody say it with me, the word of knowledge. This is a supernatural revelation by the Holy Spirit of certain facts in the mind of God. And God's all-knowing. We talked about this already. He knows everything. But he doesn't reveal everything to you. Aren't you glad? I mean, aren't you glad you don't hear everything that God hears? How would that change your opinion about some people? Aren't you thankful you don't know everything that God knows? Aren't you thankful everybody don't know everything that God knows about you? Have you thought about this, guys? So how many of you are thankful God's the one who picks and chooses this stuff? And reveal certain things, and you know, and I and I've seen some I've seen some crazy things happen, guys, to where one one guy was really he was coming against the Holy Spirit in a meeting, and the Holy Spirit exposed this guy for who he was, and I always question God, why'd you do that? Why? And and I never have received an answer. The only thing that I've been able to to comprehend in this is that. You know, if he hadn't have done it that way, it would have damned up the whole meeting and the other hundred people would have never got anything. Do you follow me? So there, there are times, you know, we used to, I got a friend of mine, she said it this way. She said, whenever the pastor announces that a prophet's coming to church, she said, I take the whole week before and repent. <laughs> she said, so that way I got everything under the blood and he can't bring it up in the meeting. Come on, y'all. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I think she was wise. I mean, <clears throat> but you could just quit doing some of that stuff. You wouldn't have to worry about it. Anyway, I'm not supposed to say that in church, right? That would be judgment. You're judging me. No, I'm preaching to you. There's a big difference. That's not in my notes. But anyway, somebody here needed to hear that. The discerning of spirits. Can we go? Everybody say it with me. The discerning of spirits. It gives us a supernatural insight into the realm of the spirits. Now, here's the thing, guys. You know, you can, you can, um, you can sense. Let's do it this way. You can sense angels and you can sense demon spirits. 
You know, I can get around people. I had this happen during the wedding. I can get around people. And I just know inside that person ain't right. Not, I'm not talking about in the head. I'm talking about, I'm, uh, you can get around people and listen and determine that. But I'm talking about in the spirit. I mean, and I just, I just walked up to this person and said, are you okay? I mean, just the anointing in me wants to minister to people who are struggling. You know, and without even thinking sometimes, I'll just go, I'll just, I'm in your, I'm in your face. You know, and, and I just walked up to her. I didn't know her. I met her. You know, I walked, are you okay? Yeah, I said, well, you just seem a little off to me. <laughs> and she was like, um, I'm fine. And I said, okay. And I backed off. Started praying it out in the spirit. I'm telling you something, we can have a kindred spirit and know when we connect. How many of you have done this? You know when you connect with somebody and, you, and, and you're both of you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And there's that divine connection. Come on, y'all. How many of you have had that happen? But you also have a divine connection when you hit somebody that's of a different spirit. This is not what this is talking about. All right, this is seeing into the spirit realm. This is being able to see things that are happening. You'll notice this one in play when John was taken, you know, up into heaven to see what was going on in the book of Revelation. He was seeing something happening in the spirit. It was playing out in the spirit. It wasn't something that he just thought of. He actually could see. He was taken up. He could see. So he sees this thing happening. So I, I just want you to understand, I'm breaking these down. Can we go to Acts chapter 9 and verse 10? I mean, we can actually do this one too. How many of you remember when Jesus turned water into wine? Well, that just didn't happen by chance. There were gifts of the Spirit in operation. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. So if he needed to be anointed, <coughs> come on, y'all. Jesus had to be anointed. Come on, will you say it with me? I need to be anointed. If Jesus needed the Holy Spirit, I need the Holy Spirit in my life too. Especially when he said, the works that I do, greater works than these shall you do, because I'm going to my Father, so I'll send the Holy Spirit to you. I mean, come on, guys, sometimes we, we just get caught up in doing things a natural way and we forget about the Spirit. I mean, let me, let me um, tell on myself. Cut Facebook off. No, don't do that. I, I had, um, I programmed touch screens and cash registers, install them, you know, and, and um, I got a call to go and do some programming at a restaurant, you know, that, that I do business with and I, I was supposed to be there this when that happened, babe. Was that Thursday that it took place? I think it was I think it was Thursday. And I and I got there and when I pulled up the owner wasn't there yet. And he had this he had this um I call it a stoop, but it was an entryway going into his to his club and there was a fire burning under the entryway. On the on the rug. The one of these commercial exterior rugs. And I got there, and I'm thinking, you know, it was a box, so I'm, I'm thinking, I know this guy don't burn boxes in his entryway. See, guys, sometimes things happen, and we just, we're just not in tune. Do you follow me? I mean, this, is, this, is re this really happened now. And then, um, so I texted him. I said, hey, are you burning a box under your porch? <laughs> you know, what a stupid thing to say to somebody. You know, but I didn't know, you know, I didn't know. Maybe he's trying to get a new building. I didn't know, you know, and, and so when I texted him, he, he actually, um, he texted me back, and he said, what are you talking about? Well, I backed up, and I looked, and um, there was a guy, older gentleman, sitting out by the side of the road in a chair next to the ditch, and I started putting two and two together. So the guy started yelling at me, saying, I'm, gonna, I'm having, having friends over for a barbecue. And I went, What? He said, I'm having friends over for a barbecue. We're going to have a powwow. And I realized this guy had set that fire. And so I went up and I grabbed the rug and pulled it. It was on fire. I pulled it and I stomped it out, folded it up so it would go out, out of the fire. Then I, then I looked at the guy and I told him, I said, did you set that fire up here? And he's, he's I'm starting a powwow. Yeah, we're going to have a barbecue. And I told him, I said, man, you're going to burn this guy's business down. I said, what is wrong with you? Did you know I missed it? 
because we called the law on that guy, and afterwards, I missed the opportunity to get that guy free. See, this is, this is why we got to be in tune with the Spirit. God didn't put that guy there by chance. I'm going to minister this in two different ways. I should have laid hands on guy, that guy and cast that spirit out of him. I missed it because I was so busy messing with the fire. This is how the enemy works. And trying to figure out the situation, I lost connection with the spirit. They picked him up, took him to jail as far as I know, called law on him, and he went. Well, then the battle began afterwards because I had missed God. Now my mind kicks in, telling me how much of a failure I am. Here I am. Here I am, fighting the battle of myself, where I failed. Anybody ever been there? Where I had the opportunity and I missed that opportunity. And I've had this happen to me several times, guys. This is why we got to be in tune with the Spirit and get to the point where we don't let the natural disconnect us from the Spirit of God. You see, the enemy is good at pulling the chains to get you thinking different than the way God wants you to think. He connects you with a particular situation or connects you with a particular thing going on at that point in time, and you miss the opportunity that you were really sent there for. Now, now let me, the guy come to me afterwards and he told me, he said, I want you to know, he said, you, you saved my business because it would have probably burnt down when that rubber rug got burning. And it was already burning. You saved my business. He said, thank you for that. But see, on one hand, God had me there for that reason, to stop that fire. Come on, y'all, say amen to that. So I fulfilled that part of it. But isn't it funny how the enemy never praised me for stopping the fire, but condemned me for missing setting the guy free? So you can't get stuck in your failure. We're human beings, and we're going to miss it sometimes. Learn from it and move on. And then pray for God to give you another opportunity with that person. Do you follow me? I'm teaching this, I'm teaching this different, guys. I, I didn't intend. Now, let, let's go into, um, where did I tell you go? Acts chapter 9, starting in verse 10. I want you to see this because the Spirit of God can tell you about certain things. And I do this one because I want to tell you the rest of the story and then we'll go into the three power gifts tomorrow. Or, or tomorrow. Y'all want to come back tomorrow? <laughs> anyway, we'll go there next Sunday. I'm telling you, man. I'm, I'm just, whew. Listen to what it says here. Acts chapter 9, starting in verse 10. There was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here am I. Did you know when God speaks to you, that's important for you to respond? You can ignore your wife, don't ignore God. You can ignore your husband, don't ignore, don't ignore God. Don't ignore your wife too many times, or you might see God. All right? Just, just a little point of information there, just to keep you from having a knot on your head. At some point in time, me having to pray you through. Amen. I had to lighten it up a little. And the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. Listen to this. For behold, he is praying. How many of you know Ananias didn't know that? But God did. You see in the gifts. You see in the gifts in operation. This is the way I'm, I'm going to do this throughout this thing. You see, you see the gifts. I just want you we read the story and say, hey, that's, man, that's nice. But we don't know the power that it took to, for this to happen. All right, listen to what he says. And it says, Then Ananias answered the Lord and said, I have heard many things about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And how many of you know that was true? Come on, y'all, say it's true. And it says, And here he has authority from the chief priests to blind all who call on your name. I love verse 15. It says, But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine, to bear my name before the Gentiles. Did you see it, guys? You see in the gifts and operation here. This is something that nobody would have ever thought of and nobody could ever plan out in the natural, but in the spirit, God had it figured out. And it was a setup to set you and I free. 
Come on, guys. It was a setup for us to get, the, get, get Jesus to us. How many of you thankful for that? He says, he will, he, before, before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel, for I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Now listen to verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him, saying, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight. Listen, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. That wasn't in that first part, was it? So we know God conveyed things that aren't written, but were necessary. And this is what it says, immediately. Everybody say it with me, immediately. immediately. It fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once. And he arose and was baptized. And then he received food, and he was strengthened. And Saul spent many days with the disciples at Damascus. See, guys, we read this. We read this, and then we, we don't take into consideration everything that came into play for this to take place. God had the plan. But he needed man to fulfill that plan. And Saul, who became Paul, was the man to fulfill that plan. But the gifts were in operation for him to get totally free and filled with the Holy Spirit so that he could walk in the path that God had him to walk in. And now you know the rest of the story. Because we're here because of that one thing. That, that revelation purchased for us the pathway for us to gain redemption. You know, this is why the gifts are so important, guys, and why you need to be flowing in the anointings. Remember, we're talking about the anointing of God. Let the gifts flow through you because that's how the anointing is released in you because I'm telling you, what if you're that one person to minister to that one person that goes and wins that one tribe somewhere or that one nation somewhere or that one city somewhere that changes everything? Because, see, we have access to the mind, the will, and the purpose. Think about this, guys. Of God Almighty. And He knows more than we know. So how many of you would say, Lord, I surrender. Come on, guys. Lord, I, I just thank you for filling me. I thank you right now, Lord. And I'm, I'm going to do this, you know, probably at the end of this teaching. We're going to lay hands on people because I believe it's important for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, and this is something that we, you know, I've been guilty of not doing enough of on Sundays, Sunday mornings, because we have visitors sometimes, and they get mad because they've been taught a different way. Well, it's time for them to hear the truth and just flow in that truth. I mean, it's just the way it is. I can't compromise the Word to become another church. I just won't do it. So how many of you know the gifts of the Spirit are for you? Would you stand to your feet? We're going to pray for Facebook, too. I forgot to mention Facebook. Thank you for joining us today. I was just so ready to preach, I neglected you, in a way. But thank you for joining us. And lift your hands toward heaven. Would you just say this to me? I thank you, Father, for your gifts, for your anointing in my life. I activate it now by faith. I'm a believer. That makes me a receiver. In Jesus' name. And will you shout an amen? Amen. amen. Now listen, this, what I'd like for you to do, guys, is, you know, if you go back and read the gifts of the Spirit, um, you know, where we were just a little while ago, go back and read that for yourself. Take that this week and let that be your study time. Because here, here's the way it works. When you begin to read the Scripture and what the Scripture says, then the Scripture and the anointing on that Word knows how to stir inside of you what's necessary to shift you around to flow that direction. Do you follow me? So read, read about the gifts of the Spirit. I mean, read. And if you're going to read a book, read something Spirit-filled from a believer and not Chuck Swindoll, who will explain it a different way. I'm just letting you know, because I read a book from him on the gifts of the Spirit. He, he breaks it all out in the natural, and there's no supernatural flow. 
That's not what I'm talking about. You need a supernatural flow in your life, and I hope I don't get dirty emails for that. But anyway, you need to read after somebody who knows how to flow. You need to read after somebody who knows how to flow in the gifts. If you're going to study it out, study it out properly. Do it right in Jesus' name. Amen? Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here today and you've never asked Jesus into your heart, what I mean by that, and on Facebook too, Romans 10, 9, and 10 says this, if we believe in our, in our heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, we shall be saved. This is what it is. You just believe inside. And you can just pray this prayer. Father, I thank you that Jesus died for me. And he rose back to life for me. I believe and I receive. I confess him now as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. And I am born again. I am a child of God. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name. And if you prayed that prayer on Facebook or you prayed it in church, see me after church. And um, I want to um, give you some information that will help you out. Are you glad you come to church today? We had an awesome service. Praise and worship was great. Give the praise and worship team a hand. They do a good job. They're in here an hour before we are getting everything ready. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Did I forget something, babe, today? No, I got it all. How about that? God bless you. Have a good one. We'll see you Wednesday night. Thank you. Amen.